All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at a model that I just added to Runway um, last night. Uh, it's called Lucid. So Lucid allows us to uh, visualize different layers of popular machine learning models. Um, before we start, I want to give a shout out to uh, Chris and Ryan, um, who recently became YouTube members. Really appreciate your support. Um, the YouTube channel on my Slack channel is starting to pick up a little bit. So um, if you've got questions, you can drop them in there. It's a private channel just for YouTube members. So um, it's pretty great. Uh, so yeah, so thanks again for being a supporter. Um, all right, so with this, let's jump into Lucid. So um, because of how Runway does their public models, I'm not really sure if you'll be able to see these, but what I recommend doing is just searching for Lucid um, when you come into models. So you'll be able to uh, find um, both the ResNet 50 and the Inception V1. Um, because of how Runway does uh, model building, um, I'm actually gonna record a video on how to uh, create your own Runway model. Um, it's easier to set these up as individual models than it is to sort of try to combine them into one. So uh, each of these will have their own model. I might add more models over the next couple weeks because it is pretty easy now that I've got it set up. Um, but you can go ahead and take a look. Uh, Inception V1 is probably the one that most people are used to using. Um, ResNet 50 is a little bit noisier, but also creates some cool graphics. So it's kind of up to you what you want to try to do. Um, we'll look at uh, Inception V1. The process is going to be the same for both these. Uh, and all you'll do is you'll add this to your workspace. And let's fire this guy up. So hit run remotely. And while this starts up, let me walk you through how a little bit of this interface works. So Lucid um, takes the inception network and uh, using some special processes is able to excite individual neurons within each layer. Uh, and that will essentially help visualize what those layers look for. Um, and if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that lower layers, um, we'll look at the lower layers. They're basically numerically lower. Um, tend to generate more, uh, how would I describe this, more like geometric structures or, or really basic lines, shapes, and forms. Um, the higher up you get, the more they look like real photographs, but also they get that sort of trippy, dream dream sort of look. So this is now running. Um, oh, interesting, it looks like it stopped. Um, I think I know why. So let me reset this neuron. This is something I should do in the defaults. So we're going to set the neuron to zero. Uh, that's because um, this layer only has 64 neurons, so it probably throws an error if you don't. So let's hit this again. It's interesting, I've never seen that happen before. Cool, so now it looks like it's running. So uh, when you start up the network, um, the network will already be pre predefined here as inception. Um, alongside here will be a number of layers. And each of these layers are uh, correspond to a layer within the network. Um, because of how uh, inception works, there's a lot of different layers. I've sort of chosen some of what I think are the best ones here. Um, and you'll be able to sort of check out uh, different layers and different neurons. One second, let me grab my cat. She's being annoying. Special bonus in my videos, you could hear bug. Um, okay, so we've already started, we've already selected a, a layer. This is conv2d, um, and this is the zeroth layer, I guess. Um, this will be super, super geometric, um, almost looking like noise. And you'll see here what happened is we chose the zeroth neuron. Um, that's the very first neuron um, in a zero indexed uh, setting. And you'll see what it generated here. So generate this very noisy sort of zebra striped looking thing. Um, you'll notice that a lot of these convolutions look like zebra stripes. That is because of how convolutions work. Um, and if we choose a different layer, let's choose one. And this will generate. So now, uh, if you remember that zero layer was sort of uh, horizontal lines. This one is sort of vertical lines. So again, what each of these layers is, or what each of these neurons is looking for is a different texture or a different um, layer or a different type of image uh, sort of functionality. You'll see that they've got a little bit of red, green, blue, and that's because, um, again, they're looking at color photos. Um, so Inception um, is a network that is built to basically do image classification. So, you know, it was run on ImageNet and it will go through thousands upon thousands of photos and say, this is a zebra, this is a cat, this is a fish, this is a baseball, this is uh, a tennis racket, those sort of things. Um, so we're looking at the very, very early layers here. Let's pick one more. Let's do six. And you'll see now we've got a diagonal. So you can almost sort of see that what it's doing is starting with horizontal, vertical, diagonal lines, and then building up from there. Uh, one thing I want to note is, um, again, this is a little bit of a limitation of the, of the runway interface. Um, what I've done is I've labeled each of these layers with a max. This max is how many neurons you can actually set this to. So uh, because this is a max of 64, your highest is actually 63. If you set it over that, I believe it will probably throw an error, and it might 
crash your machine like what happened here. Um, so you can play with these, but just be sure that you're aware of this max number here. Um, so each of these is labeled with what the max number is. So let's choose something now in the middle. Let's choose mix 3B. Actually, let's choose mix 4A because mix 4A is sort of what um, a lot of uh, demos of these tools use. Uh, it seems to be sort of a nice middle layer uh, that gives you a good um, graphic. So here you'll see we've still got diagonal lines, but now we've also got these little additional sort of like cells that are going opposite it. Um, so there's, you know, some interesting things going on here. Uh, we can play with a different, let's again look at a different um, neuron. So this is a max of 508. So let's try um, 453. One thing you'll also notice is that the higher up you go, the longer it takes to generate these images. Um, that's because of this process that it goes through. Um, so here we've got one that almost looks like it's finding like buildings on its side or something. Um, so really interesting textures uh, able to be generated from here. Um, I think this is a helpful learning tool, but also you can just generate some cool images. Uh, one thing to note is the default size is 128 by 128. That's just the default for Lucid. Um, I've got it set up so you can generate larger images. And if you just swipe this up, uh, it sort of scales by 128 just because that tends to be a good number. Um, so we'll do 512. One thing to note is the, the larger your size is, the longer it's going to take to generate the images. Um, so see a 128 by 128 took about 11 seconds. I would guess this one's going to take oh, 14, 15. Okay, um, so interesting. So you get a much larger size. Why does that look different? Hmm. Interesting. Um, technically, the size shouldn't affect what the neuron looks like. Maybe it is. Uh, maybe I made a mistake there. Um, I'll have to dig into the code. Maybe there's an error here. Um, but anyway, what it should just do is it should just scale up the map. It's sort of, sorry, it doesn't scale up. It doesn't scale up the image. What it does is sort of like creates a bigger tile um, of that of that graphic. Let me try this again. Let me try 452. I'm also noticing the image output is only five, only 256. All right, there might be some bugs in my code. I might have to come back and play with this a little bit more and see what's going on. This one's definitely taking a little bit longer. There we go, 512 by 512. Um, and interesting, I feel like I got a different neuron. Okay, I definitely have to look at the code here. There's some going on here. Anyway, uh, these should be about the same size depending on, on, on what you're going here. So let's do one more. Let's look at the very like the very top layer. Um, we'll look at mixed 5B. And actually, I'm going to switch my size back down to 128 just so this demo runs a little bit faster. You'll notice that one took 28 seconds, so that was 512. Um, so just be aware of that. So I think this is also potentially an issue with uh, the way that Runway works, which is that as you change these things, it sort of reruns that program. So it might actually be that we're like, it's kind of like stuck behind a couple different sessions. Um, while this runs, let me do another thing here. So, let, so if you're interested in just sort of like, obviously you could play with this all day and there are thousands upon thousands of images you could build. Um, so this is 5B, right? So 5B, I sort of see like almost cardinals um, and other birds showing up in here. So I think this is a like, yeah, this is the very, very top layer, um, and it's sort of you can start to see what the images look like. Obviously, there's a ton of images you could play with here. Um, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at OpenAI Microscope. So uh, I definitely want to do a, larg a longer video on uh, what the OpenAI Microscope is, but this is essentially Lucid, um, and all they've done is they've generated all of the images for each of these layers and patterns. So what you might want to actually do is actually like sort of dig through this, uh, first and sort of see like, oh, I want this layer in this image and then set that in runway. Um, so you can actually get those images out and maybe then play with them uh, in runway itself. So if we go come down here again, so let's look at 4A. Um, and then you'll see all of the different layers here, right? So 4A2, um, you know, these tend to be like uh, this sort of middle ground where they're both a little bit textural, but also a little bit of images. Um, you can maybe start to see some faces or other like animal shapes popping up here. This looks like bridges or something. This definitely looks like bird texture plus eyes. I don't know. Uh, there's this, there's a lot of great things you can do. You can click in here um, and it will, it's a little slow, but it will sort of show you what, um, yeah, so here's an example. Okay, so here's what it finds. It finds dog eyes. Um, so it's sort of close. Uh, it's like fuzzy with a black circle in the middle. Um, so this is a really great tool to just sort of visualize and utilize. Um, I would use this in, in combination with Runway, um, just so you can generate some images in Runway, but you can also play with uh, the visualization tool here. Um, so let's go back and let's do 4A. And let's do unit two. So let's come here. 
So we're going to pick, uh, let's see, so let's do Neuron 2. And let's do Mixed for A. So we've now played with both the layer network, uh, the neuron ID, uh, a little bit of size, and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at transforms. So transforms is sort of like a nice little trick you can do to sort of vary your textures. Um, and once this finishes loading, I'll show you how this works. Cool. So this is mixed for a two. That doesn't look right. All right, well, either way, <laughs> let's just deal with what we have. Um, okay, so um, we've generated an image here, and this image is sort of like a, a static size, right? Like there's just, um, you know, the individual, like uh, it's sort of flat. So one thing you're going to do is you can play with this transforms, and what this is going to do is it's going to vary the shape and size of the individual elements inside the image. So let's turn the transforms on. I believe transforms will also sort of like take a little bit longer for your, your network to run. Cool, so here we go. So now that we've turned transforms on, I'm gonna turn this off. I feel like something was going on there where that was not during the right image. Okay, so this is 4A um, without transforms, that seems right. Um, and then when we turn transforms on, you get varying scales, right? So it's sort of like you're getting smaller stuff and bigger stuff. This is a nice tool to play with, um, just to, in order to like sort of see some different examples. Um, and you can sort of play with the difference in scale here. So if I turn this up, and then I turn this off, or turn it on, I guess, is what I'm turning it on. You'll see that you get vastly different scales, right? You get a lot more smaller pieces, and it's a little bit um, less structured. Um, so this is something you can play with. Uh, there's a lot of features in here to just sort of like play around with. Um, I will say Runway is a little slow for this. Um, I might find faster speeds if I do this on Colab. Um, but it's just sort of a cool tool to play with, and I think there's lots of things you could do um, because Runway has chaining features, I think there's a lot of cool things you could do to chain this with other tools. Like maybe you put this into a style transfer, or maybe you're um, actually like visualizing using captions what these images are um, to like a caption network. So lots of cool stuff you could do in here. I recommend playing around with it more. Um, if you have questions, you can feel free to drop them in the YouTube comments for me. Um, and yeah, again, if you're interested in joining uh, the YouTube channel as a member, um, you can go ahead and do that and you'll get access to uh, a special private Slack channel as well as um, discounts on any of my future classes or other materials that I sell through my store. Um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much.